Hey guys, this is Henry from OBD again. Today we're going to keep working on our preferences window in Pro Tools. So, um, now we're going to be working on the mixing tab of the preferences window. So basically everything related to mixing and the way mixing operates, you can set here. Okay, so let's start. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, sorry, one, two, three, four areas. <laughs> um, within the mixing tab. The first one is setup, then you got controllers. So if you have any kind of Pro Tools controller or MIDI controller um, surface, you know, uh, to control the software, you can set that here, um, the way it operates. Then you got some automation, very important when you're mixing. And then delay compensation, very important uh, when you're mixing and using plugins. So let's start here with setup. Um, I typically, once again, a lot of the stuff that you're going to see here, I'll leave the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave default, but some others I'll change. So check this out. Uh, here in setup, sends default to minus infinity. What this means is that when you create a send in Pro Tools, as soon as you create it, the volume of the send is going to be set to minus infinity. So it's basically all the way down as far as the send level. I like it to be that way uh, because otherwise if I create the send, and I have a return already uh, assigned. As soon as you create the send, boom, you got all the signal going into that. Um, let's say if it's a rebirth, you're gonna have all the signal going to that rebirth. So I don't. That could be abrupt sometimes. So I just leave that at minus infinity. And if I have to, um, if I'm gonna use it, I'll just push it up um, until I like the way it sounds. Okay. Um, now some people like this off. So when you create it, it goes all the way to zero, uh, zero dBs, and that's a good way to know if your return and your sends are properly routed, because as soon as you create it, you're going to hear that return um, operating, okay? If it's a rebirth, you're going to hear that rebirth. I like it to be a minus infinity. Uh, send pans default to follow main pan. I should probably have that on. Uh, I typically use sense a lot for rebirths and time-based processing. So basically what this does is when you create a send, the pan pot of that send is going to have the same position as the main pan pot of that track. So if that track is pan all the way to the left and you create a send to that, then the send is also going to be all the way to the left. Um, if you don't want that to happen, you can always turn that off within the track, okay? Uh, follow main pan, you can turn that off within the send of that track. Now, but if this is on, by default, the follow main pan is gonna be on. Um, a couple things here, uh, here, this is very important. You can set a default EQ and a default dynamics plugin uh, within Pro Tools. I think by default, this is set to none. I have changed that so that I have my default equalizer to be the EQ3 7 band from Avid, and I have my default dynamics to be the SSL channel from Waves. And the way it works is that if you go to a track and you try to add a plugin, you can see I have here, it's almost like a favorites list. You'll have an EQ and a dynamics already there. I could go to plugin and look for that EQ, Avid, and then EQ37 band, but if you use it a lot, you can just have it there, and it's cool, you know, if you, there's an EQ that you use a lot, you might want to have it there, and if there's a compressor that you use a lot, you might might just want to have it there, right there in front of you, with a couple clicks. Very useful when you're mixing. Now, you could also set that to be associated to an insert slot. So basically, if you set the default EQ on insert A, and let's say the dynamics on insert B, as soon as you create or import a track, by default, it's going to add it to the first insert and this one, let's say if it's on B, to the second insert. Um, if you, you know, I, I've seen some engineers that like, um, let's say, the SSL channel just to say uh, one random channel strip. They want to, that, to have that on the first uh, insert just because they like to feel like they're mixing on an SSL desk. So they have that set to A. So every single track has the SSL channel. Uh, as the first um, insert. That's up to you. I don't like that. I have some friends, engineers that do it. I personally don't. 
Now, one cool thing here, if you have an EUCon Surface, I do have one. Um, you could do auto insert default plugins from EUCon Surfaces. So basically, from your Surface, you could add an equalizer, and it's going to add this equalizer, the one you have here set. If you add the in the dynamics, it's going to be this dynamic. In this case, it's the SSL channel. I could do any other dynamic plugin. Uh, cool thing, you can, if you have an EQ Yukon surface, you could control this EQ and this dynamic from the surface. You don't have to use the mouse. Now, we have another area here related to controllers. Um, as I said, I have an e Yukon surface. It's an eight-channel little uh, surface that I use in Pro Tools, and I think this is crucial with your this this first two uh, check boxes. I think they're crucial when you have a surface. Edit window follows bank selection. What this means is that the the eight banks that you have in front of you, uh, or the what you have in your edit window, it's followed by the bank selection. So, in this case, you can see the first track that I have on my edit window is uh, Tom number two, and then I have overhead trash symbol. Uh, sorry, trash. Um, track and then brass and things like that. So this banks that I have here starts in Tom 2. So if I go to my surface, it's going to start in Tom 2. So what I have on the surface is basically linked to my edit window and also my mix window um, on the second option. Okay, so that's very useful there. Um, once again, it's totally optional. If you don't have a controller, this is probably use useless to you. But if you do have one, this is going to help you a lot because they're going to be linked. Now, automation. Um, all of these options on the left, I typically just leave default. Uh, one cool thing here, smooth and thin data after pass. Uh, it'll smooth the automation that you just wrote so it's not abrupt. That is, I guess you could say, useful if you're automating. You don't want things to happen too abrupt. Uh, you want things to be smoother. That's fine. Uh, as I said, this is all default. Now, this part here, I think this is another crucial that you might want to make sure that you have selected. It says, after write pass, switch to. And you got three options here. After writing pass, I typically switch to touch and not latch. So what happens is you are in write mode and you're writing automation. Okay, let's say it's a volume. Let's say it's the fader. You're writing the fader of, an, of a lead vocal track. So after you finish writing that, you stop, and as soon as you stop that automation or that writing procedure, it'll switch automatically to touch mode. Touch mode is basically read mode, so it'll play back whatever you just wrote, and it'll, it'll only start writing again only when you touch that fader and while you touch it. So let's say you wrote the automation in write mode, you like the way it sounds, but there's a little part here that you want just a little more, just that maybe a word, maybe a couple of words that you want a little more volume. So it'll switch to touch when you finish writing, then you start playing back again, you're in touch mode, the fader is moving automatically because it, it was automated, and then when you get to that part, you touch it, uh, boost it up, and then as soon as you release it, it'll go back to the way it was, and it'll, it'll go back to reading the automation that you had previously written. I know this sounds a little cumbersome, but when you start automating, this becomes something extremely helpful. Okay. Now, if you do latch, which I think is a default, the only difference is that um, in order to stop writing automation in latch, you have to either punch out of automation or stop the playback. While in touch mode, if you want to stop writing automation in touch, you just release, you stop touching that fader. Okay? And then you have delay compensation. So I typically leave this as samples. Why? Um, when you're compensating, uh, when you're doing delay compensation, it's because you're using plugins. Okay? Plugins add delay um, because they have to. You, you know, process digital audio. So you want the timeout to be in samples. So if the plugin adds, let's say, 64 samples of delay, or 128, or 1,024, whatever it is, you want this to compensate the same amount of samples. So that's the mixing tab of the Pro Tools Preferences window. 
Um, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Keep following us so um, you'll be able to uh, watch the next tutorials in which we're going to be dealing with the other the remaining tabs of the preferences window. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.